hello friends so in the last uh, video we discussed about the technical standard for construction of electrical plants and electric lines regulation 2022 and there we have uh, focused on the general requirements for the all the transmission line and the electrical plants and uh, then we discuss about the substation and the switch yard for 66 for 66 kV and above voltage level and uh, in the present uh, uh, section in this video we will be discussing about the electrical lines then we will be discussing about uh, some major aspect of the thermal power plant some major aspect of the hydro power plants that has been described in this standard so first uh, we will discuss about the electrical lines which are uh, rated for the more than 60 means 66 kV and above voltage level there are in the standard there is a part a in which uh, this is provided in the electrical lines part it has been provided for 66 kv and above voltage level and there is uh, another part in the part b where it is for the distribution line below this uh, 66 kv level that is 33 11 kv and uh, um, below voltage levels basically so we will be focusing on the 66 kv and above that is the sub transmission and the transmission system basically so what are the compliance uh, and the guidelines that has been provided for the 66 kV and above voltage level transmission line so first thing is that how it should be planned so the planning has to be done considering the manual on the transmission planning criteria and then this recently the recently to in 2023 ca has come out with the ca uh, uh, in the march 2023 it has come out with the new transmission planning criteria which is the revised version third revised version of the planning criteria and uh, all these uh, transmission line has to be designed for a life of more than 35 years so whatever you are designing this should be made for 35 considering the age of more than 35 years and uh, after that it can be go for you know reconducting you can go for changing of the towers you can go for uh, means uh, whatever the technology options available for you know means uh, extending the life of the transmission system so and uh, Apart from the what is the life and the means of for it has been designed, what should be the configuration of overhead transmission line? So it has been uh, quoted that it should be always a double, at least a double circuit configuration. You can have a quad circuit or multi circuit configuration, but at least it should be a double circuit configuration. While for 765 kV lines, so there you can go for a single circuit also. But you have to take a pro approval from the National Committee on Transmission because you know in single circuit you are utilizing means the right of way is being utilized but the overall utilization will be less. So it's a bit means that's why it has to be approved by the National Committee on Transmission because the cost of transmission is there. So it has to be approved based on its appropriateness, based on its uh, you know, means, uh, economics and other aspects that is uh, involved in this one whether it is really suitable to have a single circuit or whether we can go for a double circuit or what are the issues that we being faced which is resulting in a single circuit kind of structure then the right of way for transmission line for different voltage level has been provided in the next you can go through the next year different how much clearance should be from the ground how much between the conductor what should be the clearance uh, among the different for the different type of towers different type of terrains this has already been provided in a part as an year right of way constants if you are uh, being if it is being faced during the means construction of the transmission line then appropriate technological option that is required to be means explored which includes the steel pole structure this one then narrow base lattice tower structures then multi circuit and multi voltage circuit multi circuits and multi voltage circuit towers basically lattice or a steel pole structure with one side stringing also xlp cable or gans insulated line let us say you are going through a city and means you are have to means uh, uh, make a ehv or the hv transmission line within a city to a gis substation in that case what will happen is that you will not find much space for putting a large transmission tower in place so that's why you have to go with the cables or gas insulated lines also or uh, you can have to you may have to go with the compact tower with insulated cross arms also or you can have this voltage source converter base hvdc on overhead lines or underground cable one example is that you know that in the mumbai this is coming up this uh, voltage source converter base hvdc transmission system it is under construction then routing of the transmission line it is uh, important to know that what should be avoided basically it is very much important to know this thing 
so what uh, need to be avoided when the transmission line is in plant and uh, then it is being executed then in that case uh, to avoid the much row issues that um, large habitation and densely populated areas need to be avoided means you have a large city or you have uh, some population over involved over there or it is it well means uh, settled over there in that case you don't need to put the transmission line rotting through that those particular areas then the protected or reserved forests or national parks or wildlife sanctuary you try to avoid these areas because it will be impacting the these uh, uh, protected uh, life wildlife basically when you are putting a transmission line through that particular area then habitat zones of the great indian bustard and other protected species recently c has also come up with the uh, gib basically for the whenever the transmission line, line is being passing through gib so in those great indian bustard areas so in those cases what should be the structure what should be the what kind of insulator what kind of protection instruments what what are the things that are being involved then a separate guideline has been published by the ca and uh, the last one is the civil or military airfields or the aircraft landing approaches so these are the four major concerns through which uh, when we are you are designing the transmission line or planning the transmission line or making the for prepare means uh, the rotting of the transmission line we need to avoid uh, this kind of things then coming back to the design so electrical design parameter of the transmission line you can see that the design parameter for the transmission line for altitude up to 1000 meter above mean sea level so you can see there what should be the nominal voltage system high say highest system voltage for which the transmission line should be rated up the conductors everything lighting impulse uh, with a stand voltages at that means it is it is very much pertinent that when you are having a 66 kV transmission line or any kind of transmission line for these whatever the instrument that you place whatever the conductor whatever the instrument that you place at the both end they should have this uh, with a stand capability then the protection arrester everything should be having a capability to have uh, this uh, this insulation level um, the, to protect the equipment they should have a basic insulation level which should be minimum of like uh, different different values has been provided for different different voltage levels so you can have this lightning impulse then power frequency with a stand voltage under dry conditions switching uh, surge with a stand voltage switching voltage is basically minimum corona extinction voltages and then the maximum uh, radio intermittent voltage all these are there that has been defined for the different different voltage level so and then there is that uh, you already uh, this uh, uh, standard already have the installation means altitude correction factor for the installation at the altitude which are above the 1000 meter of the sea level then we have this important factor that is what we call as a transposition so if there is a long transmission line and it means uh, and uh, it has distributed parameters right so in case you don't transpose the transmission line what transposition means means that let us this is like r y and b these are in the let us say this is and this is ground okay so in those cases what will happen is that if you put a long transmission like this what will happen this the capacitance is not properly distributed across the entire line so what will happen is that the, uh, there will be a significant variation in the voltage of r phase y phase and b phase so there will be a significant difference in the voltages basically so in order to compensate those kind of thing you need to do transposition what you do is that you uh, this is let us say the starting point then at the in in between point you convert it like this one this one will be coming the r phase then uh, you put this one as a b phase then you put this one as a y phase so in this way uh, you go for three transposition in between so that again you have the r y v at the end levels okay so that's why it is written that uh, for a three phase conductor transposition in ac transmission line with approximately three equal parts means let us say it is like uh, more and uh, it is it has to be done whenever the line length is more than 100 km so what is there what is required is that let us say uh, uh, if you have a transmission line of uh, 2 300 km so then what you will do you will do 100 km one transmission position another 100 km and another one so and another means uh, in that way you have to two three equal parts transmission line has to be divided so that it can be so that the capacitance effect and the means uh, the uh, distribution of the impedances should be matched properly 
and uh, we um, there, there should not be much voltage magnitude difference between the, the uh, three uh, means all the three phases when the line is being energized then talking about the conductors you can have for the 400 kb minimum two conductor per phase is required for 500 kb hvdc and 765 kb single ac circuit you need to have a minimum four conductor per phase for 800 kV HVDC and 765 kV double circuit AC, minimum 6 conductor per phase so that the, its if capacity can be properly utilized basically. Then 1200 kV AC transmission for that minimum 8 conductor per phase is required. And the different type of conductor are AC, SR, double AC, triple AC, AAC, SR, HC, double ASC, HPR, OH, or HTLS, high, high tension low side conductors. There are different type of conductors which are well known. It is uh, These are the conductor type that has been mentioned. Then coming back to the earth wire that has been that will be put uh, with these uh, transmission structures basically the transmission line. Also for the 220 kV and below single earth wire is required and 400 kV and above two earth wires are required. For the 66 kV voltage class line the means uh, OPZ blue wire or the galvanized standard steel or ASCR is required. So wherever it is required that the let us take it for 220 kV. It is required that the protection should have the teleprotection scheme for that OPGW will be required. So you need to have a OPGW wire. Or for the let us say for 132 and 66 kV it is not required, then you can have a galvanized a standard steel or ASCR earth wire conductors. For 110 kV and EVA voltage level, you can see that optical ground wire is required. This is very much required. Okay. So for 400 and again you can see that for 400 kV there will be two earth wire, right? So for two here it is one earth wire. So that's why this uh, is this, that this should be optical ground wire. Here this is uh, 66 kV voltage level. So only either you can have this uh, single earth wire laser, you can have either OPZW or if it is required and or you can have a galvanized standard steel ASCR. For 400 kV you will be having two wires basically. So for two wires one of the two should be OPZW wire. And the second earth wire it can be galvanized standard steel or ASCR wires. Okay. Then the designing of the tower, then the for that the electrical clearances as per this should be as per the relevant standard of CA measures for the relating to safety of electrical supply regulation 2010 or any other subsequent regulation that has come. So basically the safety regulation has also been revised. So this is also uh, available on the CA website. Then the wind zone for wind loading as per the wind map, how the means what for different different type of wind zone, how the what should be the tower structure, what should be its uh, you know the resilience, it should how it should be its, uh, uh, strength should be there. So this has been given that for 50 kilometer of broader of the two wind zones as specified in the wind map, the tower shall be designed for the higher of the two wind zones. So let us let let us say if it is going on from the this is the one wind zone where the tower is structure, then this is the and this is the length. Let us say this is wind zone one. And this has been a let us say this is around 50 kilometer and then this is 50 kilometer something like that. So if a tower is lying in this zone, then uh, let us say if this is the higher wind zone uh, in which for which that uh, where the tower is lying. So and let us say key, uh, this range is like this one. So if it again this is then and this is the lower wind zone. So if the tower is here located here something like this or something like this area something 50 kilometer from this area zone end then again this tower should be completely on the higher wind zone basically. Then the again for the cyclonic portion like the eastern coast and Gujarat coast up to 66 60 kilometer from the sea coast K4 factor of 1.3 shall be considered for take care of cyclonic wind condition. So for those the special consideration has to be taken in terms of the K4 factor of 1.3. Then for the 765 kV single circuit line, it has been mentioned that this cannot use delta configuration tower because many tower collapse has been observed and it was suggested that delta configuration is not suitable for the 765 kV single circuit lines. Then coming back to the earthing basically. So again the tower clearances uh, prior to that, tower clearances like the normal design has been for various voltage of transmission line. You can see that uh, if you go for the different kind of areas, the normal design span should be 400 meter. And for seven different different areas, different like uh, without any constant forest area, urban area. So different different span has been mentioned for the different different voltage level. 
coming back to the earthing the earthing uh, it should all the transmission line uh, transmission tower should be earthed with tower footing impedance should be less than 10 ohms so you have to do the earthing in such a way that the tower footing impedance should be less than 10 ohm and you have to use pipe type or counterpoise type earthing or multiple earthing or use environmental friendly materials for uh, means uh, environment friendly earth enhancement materials for the earthing of the towers if let us say the earth tower footing impedance is not achieved then use lines as it has been mentioned on phase conductor connected to that of the tower to reduce the back flash over basically and so you can uh, if the you, you are trying to implement different kind of uh, materials or different kind of techniques to reduce the footing impedance but uh, still it is not coming down below less than 10 ohms then it is mentioned that you can go for utilization of the line surge arrestor so that back flash over should not happen because if the this tower footing impedance is not uh, in that range what is happening is that after the lightning your there is a charging of the means uh, 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 earth also and then it can conduct via the basically the tower itself and the, with, with that difference there will be a backlash over through the insulator string. So due to, to avoid those kind of thing it is required that this uh, tower footing impedance if it is not achieved so that there should not be any damage to the tower there should not be any damage to the means people or the human life or not damage to the uh, insulator so for those kind of scenarios if you see that it is not possible to reduce the tower footing impedance then you are going to use the line surge arrestor on phase conductors connected to that tower and additional add thing for direct earthing of shield wires after every 7 to 8 kilometer has been mandated so this was all about uh, the transmission line uh, we particularly discuss about the transmission line for 66 kV and above voltage level 33 kV you can go through the regulation itself. Now coming back to the some salient parameters or some salient uh, points about the hydroelectric generating station that has been mentioned in the standard. So this standard is applicable for the, you know, means uh, it is applicable for the runoff river type scheme, hydro scheme, storage hydro scheme, pump storage hydro scheme, canal based header scheme also. And the stall capacity should be more than 25 megawatt basically. For lower capacity, you can utilize some of the spec. The stipulation as required will be applicable from this standard itself. So what are the general requirements? That the life of the civil work should be more than 100 years. So the, whatever the design and construction, whatever the dam, whatever the structures, whatever the tunnels that is being constructed, the civil life design should be more for more than 100 years basically. And the life of the electromechanical generating equipment, turbine, generator, transformer, auxiliary should be more than 40 years basically. So what are the design means, what are the consideration factor during the design? So it should be able to operate unconstrained means there should not be any constraint in the operation. The design should be like that. So for what uh, different criteria it should have unconstrained operations? So for range of maximum net head and minimum net head. So whatever the net head between the different uh, water level basically so it should if it is mentioned that this should be the maximum net head this is normal operating level this is maximum net head this is the minimum net head that is applicable so in that in those cases this should be able to operate within this range when, when the water level is within this range then it should not have any problem in operation then a specified silt condition wherever applicable uh, so wherever means you know means the himalayan range is very much prone to the silt so that's why it, for a specified silt condition should be applicable for which it should provide an unconstrained operation. And then the full range of ambient and other environmental conditions. So whatever the environmental condition and ambient condition that has been defined for that it should be able to operate for its full range uh, in the, its full range basically. And then uh, another technical parameter that has been considered is that it should be able to operate as a synchronous condenser operation possibility has to be seen. When the generating unit, unit, generating unit we are talking, not the entire plant capacity, generating unit of rated capacity more than 50 megawatt time and above, they should have this synchronous condenser operation capability. This will help in the voltage control basically. Then the, because you know means in, with the hydro what is the situation is that they operate with the full capacity at one point of time and then you can see that at another point of time they will not be able to operate completely. So means it will the entire plant will be shut down. So you may face and these are located at a remote area. So you may face voltage situations also. 
then the operating capability of the generating units the hydro generating units basically so what should be that the continuous rated output first we are talking about the rated output what should be the continuous rated output so it is it, it has to be specified by the manufacturer at the rated design head and rated discharge level so whatever the design of the head is there and the discharge level is there based on that it will provide that what should be its continuous rated output for this particular parameter then the its capability to operate it should be able to operate between the maximum and minimum head as specified by the purchase and ambient temperature at site already mentioned in the previous slide then the maximum continuous overload capacity means how much overload you can do if the continuous rating let us say rated output is 100 megawatts and what how much overload can it, overload it uh, can be overloaded or not so it should be that 110 percent of the rated capacity of unit at a generator terminus during the high head condition or high discharge condition so it should be designed like that like rated discharge and then high head and the high discharge conditions are there let us say water is significant water is there and you are you can uh, you should be able to operate more than its rated capacity so it should be designed like that so maximum continuous overload capacity should or continuous overload capacity it should be 110 percent of the rated capacity then continuous operation without any restriction so when it uh, means uh, un under what condition so within the provided frequency range voltage range combined variation of voltage as well as the frequency as per the central ca regulation on the technical standard for connectivity to the grid so as per whatever has been provided in the technical standard for the connectivity to the grid, for that frequency voltage and combined voltage frequency range it should be able to provide the continuous operation without any restriction and then it should be able to complete or uh, operate without any restriction for a complete range of operation for active and reactive power so well whatever the capability curve it has provided it should be able to operate within this part then it should have a single command for a starting of the unit in auto mode to up to the synchronization and loading of the unit to full cap load quickly so the one of the thing is that the hydro plants can be started very quickly and it can be loaded fully to the its maximum level so for that uh, there is a requirement that it should from with a single command you can go for a starting of the machine in auto mode and it, it should be able to synchronize and load the unit to its full capacity then there is a frequency control requirement that automatic automatic frequency control mode should be available basically it should be free fgmo rgmo whatever is applicable as per that then uh, this uh, capability for the controlling for the controlling the frequency it should be there with the corner basically then what should be the redundancy the unit auxiliary and station equipment what redundancy so generating units should continue to operate in event of outage of the part of auxiliary system so let us say one one some part of the auxiliary is going out then in that case you should have enough redundancy so that generating unit are still continue to operate in such condition and it has been mandated that all these hydro units should have black start facility so only the means for variable speed machine you need to check whether it is feasible or not but for others it is mandated so the next part is the thermal generating station we will be discussing about uh, some aspect of the thermal plant power plants so first uh, the requirements uh, for the all thermal power plants so general requirement is that the life of the coal lignite gas based thermal power plant should be more than 25 years and life of the internal combustion engine based uh, station should be more than 15 years this is the common to all I will be discussing more about the coal and lignite and you can go for the other like gas or the internal combustion is an other aspect in the standard itself. So we will be discussing about the coal or lignite based thermal power plant. So what should be the operating capability of the unit? So maximum continuous operation should be without any restriction means it should have the operating capability of unit should have maximum continuous operation without any restriction under the condition that what is the maximum cooling water temperature at the site? within the frequency range and the voltage range this is means the water temperature for which the based on the cooling requirements and the another aspect of the technical requirement is that the frequency range voltage range and the combined voltage and frequency range as per the technical standard and it should be able to provide the maximum continuous operation without any restriction on the worst fuel quality stipulated for the unit to there should be a requirement of a stipulation that what kind of worst fuel quality will be available at the unit and for that we should be able to provide the basically the continuous operation without any restriction and it should have base load operation capability that regular load cycling and the two shift operation can be there so that like uh, 
let us say the plant is going up in this manner then in the next uh, eight hours it is going down it is a stop and again it is up and then it is again a stop so let us say let us say 24 hour like it is 12 hour then it is 24 hours so the two shift operation should be possible and regular load cycling can be done it can be like here it is going up then down then up then down something like that then the what is the unit design criteria so turbine design the minimum requirement for life is that it should be a turbine should be able to have 4000 hot start minimum this is the minimum level and it should have 1000 warm start and 150 cold start should be available with that so total you can see the 5 five one five zero type of a start is the minimum part that has been mentioned it can be more than that also it is it is required to have more than that then for subcritical unit design there can be a supercritical and there can be a subcritical type of you know means thermal power plants can be there uh, basically the coal based and the lignite based power plants so for the subcritical unit design so the constant pressure and sliding pressure can operation should be possible and while for the supercritical unit design sliding pressure operation or the modified sliding pressure condition is required for the unit design basically and all unit at any operating load the throttle reserves shall be sufficient to achieve an instantaneous increase in turbine output by 5% of the corresponding load with maximum output up to 105 this is basically you can see that this is for the governor part basically the free governor mode of operation that unit should be able at if it is running at 100% then it should be uh, still be able to provide the 5% output based on the means if you have you should have the throttle reserve or the back end of the governor you should have a reserve of the that much of uh, sufficient uh, steam it should be available so that it can again pick up to one zero five percent of its whatever the voltage uh, load level is there above that it can go immediately to five percent then you should have a quick startup and loading of unit to full load at very fast rate so ramping rate should be very good then the minimum ramping you can see the minimum rate of loading or the unloading is mentioned that 3 percent per minute between 70 to 100 percent of maximum continuous rating below that uh, 2 percent per minute for 55 percent to uh, this uh, 70 percent so that because um, if unit is running at higher level then, then it's a uh, it is more stable compared to if it is running at the lower rated capacity or whatever the means lower values based uh, uh, lower value of its maximum continuous rating basically and it should have so that the means the uh, this uh, finance ball the basically it should be very much stable so if you put it at a very high rate of ramping at a lower voltage lower loading level then it may go unstable so that's why and it is basically on the while support also so that's why it is very much required that the ramping should be properly maintained at some uh, lower rate compared to the it is it is providing the ramping at the higher loading level so again you can see that the one percent per minute between 40 to 55 percent maximum continuous rating is there so it should be able to operate you can see that the 40 to 100 percent this is the provide one range has been pointed that it should provide me the sufficient uh, means uh, means should be able to run between 14 to 100 percent then you should have the ability to house load operation in event of sudden load throw up so it should be able to manage itself or the unit should still keep on running at the house load operation in case there is a cut off from the seat. let us say the substation has the all the transmission line has stripped from the substation then it should be able to sustain on the house load basically then these are the various parameter like boiler maximum continuous rating what should be that so it is uh, it has been mentioned that uh, at least 120 percent of the steam flow at turbine inlet under valve wide open condition vbo condition including the overload valves that is high pressure stage bypass continuous steam requirement for auxiliary system of the unit when unit is operating above control load so these are the con for the boiler maximum continuous rating you need to consider these three and again it is uh, continuous rating should be uh, provided for the worst fuel quality stipulated so this is for the boiler basically and all part of the boiler should meet the indian boiler regulation then it should have the electronically controlled electro hydraulic governing system for all the type of unit for more than 200 megawatt unit you need to have a backup governing system also which can be mechanical hydraulic or electro hydraulic types so more than 200 uh, megawatt unit should have two governing system in case of any failure the other governing system should be in place should uh, take over basically so and uh, there are like uh, some aspect on the turbine protection you can see then turbine bypass system should also be available for more than 100 megawatt unit and uh, 
you can see the um, what is the minimum steam generator efficiency how it need to be calculated and uh, what is the gross uh, uh, turbine cycle heat rate mean maximum gross turbine cycle heat rate is that it is mentioned for different different basically unit size basically and it is mentioned for the super critical as well as ultra super critical and the sub critical units also so you can go through these things in the regulation itself then it it has also mentioned about the different auxiliary system like condensate polishing system feed water regenerative system steam condenser system boiler feed pump system so different aspect you can see that uh, what should be the design manufacturing and testing it, how it should be performed what should be the number of condensate pump whether one condensate pump should be there or whether two condensate pumps should be there or whether boiler feed pump so what should be the capacity of boiler feed pump for the different different type of uh, unit size so this is already also has been mentioned in detail in this regulation so coming back to the type means the generator efficiency and the excitation system so our focus that uh, focus is on that the efficiency of the generator should be 98 percent at more than 98 percent at rated load and the insulation class the generator should be having is thermal class f for a stator and rotor winding so in previous section we were talking about the boiler turbine all this and then we are coming to the electrical part that is the generator excitation system so the efficiency is more than 98 percent for the rated load for the generators insulation class is thermal f class for a stator and rotor winding and it should be hydrogen cooled or hydrogen or water cooled or air cooled type basically and what kind of excitation system should be there so suitable excitation system as well as automatic avr this should be as per the ca technical standard for connectivity to the grid regulation 2000 or any amendment thereafter and it should have the power system stabilizer for damping oscillation for making it more stable in automatic voltage regulator so avr should have pss capability also and it should be as per the ca technical standard for connectivity to the grid regulation 2007 what should be the rated voltage of the excitation system it should be more than 110 percent of the machine excitation current at rated output of the machine and it should have rated voltage of 110 percent of the machine excitation voltage and it, the avr should be having two in two channels 200 percent redundant channel basically and there should be automatic change but in case of one there is a failure of the one of the channel is there in the avr and you can also have the manual control also in the auto fails so you can have different kind of a static it means either you can have a static excitation or a brushless excitation system so for a static excitation system there is a requirement of redundancy and for the brushless also there is a requirement of redundancy so you can see that uh, for a static excitation system they have mentioned that about the converter basically n plus 2 redundancy should be there where n is the number of bridges required to deliver rated excitation current and n plus 1 is the number of bridges that shall deliver the ceiling voltage or the current basically and for brushless you need to have a redundancy rectifier assembly either complete bridge or as a redundant or at least one redundant parallel branch in each of the six arm of the bridge should be there so this is the required redundancy level for the excitation systems then uh, the power transformer basically for what is required in that uh, there are three kind of transformer that is at uh, the power plants basically thermal power plant uh, so these have the generator transformers then the unit auxiliary transformer and the station transformer so the they should comply with the all the latest version of the indian standard or international come electro technical commission standard the ic standards for the transformers basically power transformers so what is required for the generator transformer it is a step up generating voltage for connection to the grid this is the requirement of the generator transformer that to step up the voltage of the generating generation to connect to it directly with the grid and it should be able to provide the startup power from the grid if circuit breaker is provided between the generator and generator transformer so there, if there is a gcb then it should be able to utilize this uh, generator transformer for the startup power from the grid and it can be this kind of transformer can be either a wild force air force or wild directed uh, air force type and you can also adapt uh, you know means uh, onf also that is wild natural air force or wild natural air natural kind of cooling system depending upon the unit side basically you can go through these regulation what is required then the cooling radiator banks it should be more than two with suitable number of standby fans or wild pumps basically 
and the total capacity of cooler for each transformer, transformer should be more than 120% of actual requirement. So whatever the number of coolers that we are providing, that it should be more than 120% of the actual requirement. So that in case of any failure, let us say we have a 20% redundancy. So in case of any failure, let us say you need 10 fans. So you will be providing 12 fans. So you have two additional fans for redundancy requirements. So in case one fan fails, then still the uh, generator transformer will have it, that much of sufficient cooling requirements is there. Then unit auxiliary transformer. So to meet the unit load requirement during the normal running of the unit, that is the purpose of the unit auxiliary transformer. That to provide the unit load during normal running of the unit. For GCB scheme, that is generator circuit breaker scheme, it should be able to provide power requirement to the unit auxiliary and a station auxiliary during a startup and normal running of the unit. And it can be ONF or the ONN type of cooling system is provided. And again, the redundancy is similar to that and the capacity of cooler is similar to that. Then the station transformer it should be able to meet the startup power requirement, the station auxiliary load requirement during the normal operation of the unit. It should meet the unit load in case of outage of unit auxiliary transformer. Let us say if unit auxiliary transformer is not available, then in that case it should be this station transformer should be able to meet the whatever the load is there, unit load is there uh, required uh, means auxiliary load that you should be able to provide to the station transformer. So this is required uh, means uh, if it, if there is a GCB scheme, then you have this generator and UAT, then you may not need a station transformer. But if there is no GCB scheme and you don't have, uh, you know, means redundant taking the, you cannot take the power of auxiliary from the unit itself, then you can, you need to have this basically from the uh, substrate and this, uh, you cannot be able to avail the power from the unit auxiliary transformer. Then in those cases, the unit may need the station transformer also and rest of the cooling requirement is as per the unit auxiliary or the uh, unit auxiliary transformer basically. So this is all about uh, the overview of the tech this uh, technical standard for the construction of electrical lines and electrical plants. Thank you.